The Spin-Off Podcast Network. Are you making the most of your KiwiSaver investment? Generate is an award-winning KiwiSaver provider with a track record of strong long-term performance. Making a smart decision now could add tens of thousands of dollars by the time you reach retirement. Book a no-obligation chat with a Generate KiwiSaver advisor today at generatekiwisaver.co.nz slash advice. A copy of the product disclosure statement is available at generatekiwisaver.co.nz. The issuer of the scheme is Generate Investment Management Limited and, of course, past performance does not guarantee future returns. Feel the pulse of the city. Feel the beat of the drum. Feel the bass blow your hair. In Las Vegas, live music delivers much more than sound. It's where music comes alive. With artists like Megan Thee Stallion, Maroon 5, Carrie Underwood, Shania Twain, Babyface, Lionel Richie, and many more. Every show is a playground for your senses. See the full summer lineup at visitlasvegas.com. I feel I am the reincarnation of Princess Diana. Okay. Yes. Oh my God, okay. I, I was that thinking that just the other day. Have you ever, you, you know, like my little scar on my cheek, same as her, you know? Okay. Fair. What? The I don't know about either of your fucking little scars. <laughs> what Why the vibe? The way you're in a dangerous relationship with the owner of Harrods. <laughs> <laughs> All of that stuff. <laughs> No more hi to my Tino Koto Kato. Welcome to Gone by Lunchtime, the original coalition of chaos. <laughs> <laughs> just a just a group of three people, me and Ben and Annabelle, having a fun podcast. Mm. Just chatting, just shooting the breeze. And Samuel over there. Hi, Sam. Kia ora. And you members, in a way, you are a part of this conversation. To everyone else, you're just lurkers, taggers along, members. Very much involved in this engaging and witty banter. The fourth through what, one thousandth members of the team. That's right. How many members there are? Yeah, many, many, many thousands oh. of them all listening right now. Hello to you today. It's Thursday, May the eleventh, and I want to make sure I get this right because I think I got it wrong last week, and I would like to formally apologise to Emma Vitz who oh, yes. sent a message saying that she got in panic because she thought she'd missed her exam because I think I got the day wrong. And that's pretty basic stuff, isn't it, for an award-winning podcast? Say what the fucking day is. <laughs> it's Thursday, May the 11th. It's mid-afternoon. We're going to talk about... No, note that that's when we're saying it. Correct. You oh. will be listening to this yes. later. yes. In order to you're identify, gonna have to start, you're going to have to start like you're traveling in time in we your would head, advise yeah. you to consult rotating objects in space to really kind of co-locate yourself with Toby right now. Yeah. Uh, also, handy suggestion: just like check your watch, and yes. then you'll know what time you're listening to us. If you want to know what time it is, mm. don't take our word for it. Check your watch. There should be one located on your phone. Hmm. Okay, well, I think Hot that's um, I tips. think that's most of the essential messages out of the way from this emergency briefing. Today we're going to talk about national ruling out working with Te Party Māori <gasps> uh, and saying coalition, coalition, ca- coalition of chaos about a million times. We're going to talk about Mecca Whaiteri a bit and where we got to that. We last spoke during a sort of semi-live watching things unfold podcast last week. We'll talk about Elizabeth Kerekere, who's an independent MP as we speak. Uh, maybe a word on polling, and we will. You don't want to talk about polling, Annabelle. She's just we melted can, into we the can floor. If you She's want to. become the personification of that melty face emoji. Uh, and we'll talk about the coronation. Won't we? That's exciting. And the case for a public... And we will round it out by um, stroking some golden orbs, some spoons, and some of those rings mounted on those phallic felt things. And we'll sing God Save the King. Can I just say thank you for asking what I've been reading. Um, Funnily enough, my friend Dr. Emma Espiner just launched her book this week. It's called There's a Cure for This, for That. There's a cure for this or that. There's mm. a cure for both. There's a cure and for this or and that. And good bookshops where you can download it off Amazon. Wait a second. Wait a second here. Yeah. This is an advertorial. 
No, it's not. You asked me what I've been reading and I just told you. I didn't ask you what yes, you've been you reading. Yes, you did. Have you, has is, is, is money, is money changed hands for this? Cocktails may have. Cocktails over there. All right. Um, yes, Emma's book is out. You could read that if you like. Um, National has ruled out working with Te Pāti Māori. Kind of an interesting one. I don't know if you watched this play out yesterday, heard this play out yesterday morning. I think Christopher Luxon wasn't intending to rule out Te Pāti Māori at the moment he did. I'm pretty sure he was intending to do it. His on-morning report yesterday at about quarter to eight was asked by Ingrid Hipkiss, will you rule them out? And he did his answer of, I just can't see any way, you know. And then he said, so are you ruling them out? And he said, yes. Oh, but I can't see any way. And then ZB, 8.45, Mike Hosking, uh, we've had a call at 8.30 from uh, Christopher Luxon's office, and they're saying that they want to come on and talk about Te Pāti Māori. On comes Luxo, says ruling out Te Pāti Māori, puts out a press statement, then the uh, press are gathered in Parliament to announce it. Da, da, da. I think it was expedited. I don't think he meant to say yes, rule them out. No, I don't think so either. I think he, I think he cracked under pressure. I've been asked the question twice. <laughs> It was like it was like looking at his notes, and he was like, uh, "No, I just can't see it happening." Guy and Guy and uh, Corin, Ingrid, yes, <laughs> yes, we're rolling them out. <laughs> like the white knuckle right just kind of finished. He was like, "Damn it, we are, we're rolling them out." I feel and like it's the embodiment of that U two song, caught up in a moment you can't get out of. Like literally, just mm. the vibe overtook him, and then it squirted out, and then he couldn't like. Pack it back up again. And, and, and then they they made it the story of the day. Mm. Um, something that you know, something that should be of no surprise to anyone. And the Maori Party itself had already ruled out. Um. <laughs> and I think they were going to do it. Like I don't think. I mean, there was. I don't. I think most of that material was ready to go. It was just mm. a, you know. It, but it hadn't been discussed in caucus well, the day before. I don't apparently, know if, I don't know if the, it was because they sort mm. of the press release or the tweet and then the press release. Contained a few sort of kind of non. I mean, maybe it was ready to go, and that was why you know the the slogans and the kind of reasons were such a non sequitur. I don't think it was a standing start, but I think that it happened sooner than expected. And then they and then they fronted um, the uh, the Bono and Edge of the National Party, uh, Luxon and Willis, and 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 they were were talking quite a lot about the separatism. Well, Luxon was about separatism, one vote. One person, one so. standard of citizenship for all, a sort of the reheating of the worst slogan national has ever taken into an election campaign in 2002. I mean, the irony is people don't understand how exhausting it is for us Māori when we're with all of our many, many votes so trying many to decide votes. who to vote for. Like, it's actually a burden. How many do you have? Anna? So I can't keep Hundreds. count. <laughs> I literally can't keep count of all of my votes. <laughs> we, we, when you... When you forensically go through the the myriad, confusing and often contradictory statements of co-leader and Aori Waititi of the Māori Party, there are things where he sort of says, oh, no, I don't see us being a democracy kind of two years ago. Uh, we want a tiddity based country and we want the restoration of sovereignty and we want a separate Māori parliament and we we don't want co-governance, but sometimes we do. And the mm. the Labour Party, oh, sorry, the, the, there was a local members bill that uh, in, in Rotorua um, which I couldn't really follow the details, but it did lead to some sort of lack of proportionality or sort of yeah. There's also voting. there's also there's also um, mm -hmm. uh, the Christchurch Regional Council, which has has two iwi appointees oh, has, on it. Says no know, I mean, that's, yeah, so that's that's, 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 that's there is a, a little worth patch, debating. There's a little patchwork of 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 these things where one person one vote or or equal voting power for everyone. Is is slightly distorted or alluded to as not a good idea. Labor last year had a bad patch of sort of saying, "Oh, democracy's changed," which they probably shouldn't have, um, because it was highly misleading in terms of their policies, which had changed nothing. Um, so, so there is a there is a kind of thread that you can sort of, you know, see under a ten thousand times magnifying glass. Um, but the real reason to rule out Party Māori is, first of all, they wouldn't work with National, mostly for PR-y sort of reasons that their people wouldn't, their voters wouldn't accept it after because that's why they ended up getting tipped out in 2017. And the other reason is they're very annoying right now. <laughs> they're 
very difficult people to work with. Um, and so there was no char- there was no prospect of a coalition. Um, but the, this idea that it's all about sort of separatism and one person, one vote is a little bit meh. And about what do you think of the suggestion that also came in that release and that press conference that the Māori Party, the Te Pāti Māori, is not the party of uh, Peter Chappell's uh, and Tariana Turia. Do you think that's true? Well, yeah, it's not. I think, you know, Luxon was kind of stating the inevitable, like uh, Rawiri Waititi and Deb Ngari Wapaka have mm. made it clear on numerous occasions that they're not willing to work with National. And as Ben said, that's the whole reason Te Pāti Māori got tipped out last time is because they were seen to be too close to national, and so actually, Luxon's done them a huge favour by disavowing working, his, you know, being able to work with them. Like this is a a mana enhancing situation for Te Pāti Māori, and it may even swing back some some Labour Māori voters towards them. I mean, the the thing that I find interesting about it though is that it seems a very brash esque approach to um, articulating. The, the relationship with them. I don't understand why Luxon would say, look, I'm a consensus kind of guy. I believe I can lead, a, I, I, I can unite U- New Zealand and, you know, work across the aisles. But, you know, Te Pāti Māori have made it very clear that they're not willing to do that. But, you know, after the election, they might feel differently and we'll see things, how, how things play out there and take a bit more of an open, pragmatic approach. But to kind of fall back on the rhetoric, which ultimately failed brash in the 2000s, seems a very strange decision. It could have been done. I mean, on one level, it's quite decisive politically. It says... I'm being clear to people what they're dealing with. You know, John Key was quite good at this in terms of New Zealand First, at least. Uh, let's just clear it out, and it might as well be me that does it rather than it being by a thousand cuts or whatever. R- ruling the out- question is whether it needed to be twinned with some of the rhetoric, rhetoric isn't mm. it, Ben? Yeah, ruling Te Pāti Māori out is the right thing for National to do in the sense that Te Pāti Māori are not going to support them after the after the election. It does benefit them most likely to have the polling reported as the left block, which is Labour, Greens, Te Party, Māori, uh, versus National and Act, as opposed to right now it's being reported as Labour and the Greens versus National and Act with Te Party, Māori in the middle. And it robs the Māori Party of the Kingmaker label, yeah, which I think they were riding on the wave of a bit. That's right. It, it, it robs them of the Kingmaker label. And it also adds, feeds into this narrative of, you know, the coalition of chaos. You know, uh, what we, when I, when I was in the Beehive, we used to call it the Hydra, which was, you know, the putative Labour, Greens, John uh, Key mana, used to call it internet, the whatever. Devil Beast. The Devil Beast, yes. John Key called it the Devil Beast, <laughs> yeah. And it's the return in that coalition of chaos of the, I, I, I wrote something about this this morning on this one off.go to NZ about that. All of that rhetoric, which was different because National was in power at the time, mm. remember, oh. so they could say we're the stable. But you remember there was that dinghy and there was the there were the national yes. were in the kind of beautiful uh you know Lake Karapiro yes. high quality patrician rowboat uh, uh you know thing. And then Labour and the Greens, the Labourines, as Stephen Joyce called them, were in the little dinghy. And then the nice detail on this was that, that was the Eminem ad, wasn't it? No, I don't think it was the oh, okay. oh maybe it was. I think it was. They yeah, no, it was much. definitely yeah. the oars was you know dun, dun, that dun, was yeah, we're well, yeah, for that. Yes, yeah. um, but then the, the the nice detail about that also was that then the uh, internet mana started rising up, and so Stephen Joyce had them in post production colour in one of the people in the rowboat purple. Oh, really? So they were also <laughs> <laughs> but it's different this time because they're not in power to some degree. But it's a it's it's still it's still it's still a pretty sound. It's it's a sound strategy for two, approach, two reasons right? because one is you freak out the median voters who might be a bit worried about the uncertainty of what these minor parties, you know, tail wagging the dog sort of thing, uh, could introduce in government. Uh, and the second thing is you introduce that worry about instability. What is Labor's ability to control or manage these parties? And and you know, At a time when a country needs nothing more than serious, stable government to tum to tum to tum. Yeah, and 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 in both cases, Te Party Māori has probably played into 
uh, that strategy um, in the last week or so. Um, first of all, with the defection of Mekafaitidi to uh, TPM, uh, which makes it look like there's this sort of strange amorphous kind of porousness of borders between the parties. Uh, and secondly, you know, the sort of theatrics um, that we saw in Parliament uh, on Tuesday, the sort of, you know, the disruption of the debate by uh, Te Party Māori wanting to do a waiata to welcome MP of 10 years standing, Mika Whaitari, to the House. Um, Mika Whaitari interrupting the debate again to try and make a personal statement, then making a personal statement, having to be interrupted by Adrian Rudafe on the, <laughs> who tried to explain that a personal explanation was meant to explain something. Whereas he said, you, can't, saying, you can't read the whole Wikipedia <laughs> entry out. Yeah. And, 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 you know, which was interesting because it was revealed that same day that Adrian Rudafe, as speaker, had given her his own personal advice on how to word her resignation. Was it? So it Where was that revealed? Uh, that was revealed by her on oh, Breakfast okay. TV, that okay. she had sought advice from okay. the Speaker and he had given her advice on how to resign while still remaining a Member of Parliament, uh, an independent member. Um, and 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 so, the, you know, the, the, the guy, you know, Adrian Reddit, I think, might have might have expected a bit of a, you know, a bit of a sort of a turnabouts, fair play, or reciprocity there, but uh, didn't get it. Annabelle, it's what did you of, make of that in the house? It's kind of ironic that National have made an example out of Te Party Māori in terms of the coalition of chaos, because probably with the exception of ACT, the Māori Party have had the smoothest, most disciplined term in Parliament, like they haven't had any major scandals or people quitting or anything salacious happening around them as opposed to old Uncle Bedlegs, Uffindale and Stuart Nash. They're on a growth trajectory, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. 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 but yeah. What, yeah. I, what, I'm, what I'm interested to see is, is, phase, is yes. how this move from Luxon plays out. Is it, gonna, is it ultimately going to be good for the right block? Because what I wonder is that if rather than pulling centre voters over to national, it actually just pulls voters back from from ACT. I do wonder if there's going to be centre voters that will read those statements and feel uncomfortable with them and feel like, oh, well, I don't, it's not that I hate Maoris mm. or I want to get into Māori bashing. So uh, while it might be good for national, whether it actually grows the right block or not will be interesting to see. Absolutely. And the, the reality the risk, is, yeah. is that it's going to be very hard for, you know, Ash, national and ACT are going to have to get a really good block. Ultimately, they can call the Māori party what they want, but if you really want to be able to govern effectively, they may end up having to have some sort of arrangement with them to get stuff through comfortably. Well, um, New Zealand first, trotting around four, not to forget as well. I mean, the other, <laughs> well, the, the, other the, the other thing is, if you look at the poll, you know, the taxpayer union poll yesterday um, had them ahead. So, you know, yeah. we, we were looking at, you know, one or two percent mm. as the kind of decider. And I, I think you're right. I think that ruling out to Party Māori is a very good strategic move for them. Um, I think that reheating all of this one standard of citizenship for all is a real danger for them because if they try and make it a race election, NZ First are much better at that <laughs> and ACT are much better at that mm. than National. Luxon's not a racist. He's not going to be able to commit to the bit. He can't, he, you know, he, he won't seem authoritative, authoritative or authentic when he does it. And so it could really lead them into bad waters there. They want to fight it on cost of living and let ACT pick up whatever those dregs are on uh, the fringes. Ironically it's, too, there's mm. also a comfort when for people, like when, when ACT is putting the boot into Māori, they can feel kind of okay because David Seymour is Māori and they're like, well, if David says it and he's Māori, it must be true, you know, and they've got like Nicola Key and stuff. So they've got a fairly brown-looking caucus, whereas when it's a middle-aged Pākehā man who doesn't have papa who's saying those kind of lines, there is a level of discomfort that can set in for, for fair-minded people. Presumably oh, for sure. part of the thinking in that rhetoric is – the sort of numbers that you saw in that Curia Taxpayers Union poll yesterday, which had ACT going up to 12.7%, on which they would land 16 seats, you know. So, in a, that, that you know, with, with, with National at 46, that gives them a kind of quarter of the size of a, 
a putative government, which is which is quite compelling. And the other part of that, I guess, is as we move, part of the coalition of chaos is by assigning to the major party assigning to its rival all the potential uh, legs of the stool, mm. and yeah. that's what we built. You know, the MMP. That's what happens under MMP to a, to a greater or lesser extent. What the last election was an aberration in that regard. There was no national couldn't say, "Look at the Greens tax policy," because it didn't ever seem as though it was going to be an important part of Labor forming a government. This time around, what's interesting, apart from anything, is that Labor has not yet begun, and surely they will, to start going. Well, let's have a look at some of these act policies that this National Act government, they'll probably start calling it an Act National Government at some point, which is a very, you know. Act. Na- well, y- you know, I mean, it is it is, it is going to be, we're going to get actual, more of that, aren't we? You, know, you can't, we, we, I mean, the, it's, it's a, Labour at some point is going to start, we're going to have just that choreography, Labour and National in the middle, um, firing over one another at those, at those imagined support parties. Yeah, for sure. Um, this this works to national's advantage to a certain extent in that act has been extraordinarily disciplined this term uh they haven't uh, you know whatever people's suspicions mm. at the beginning of the term none of their list members have sort of revealed themselves to be like head cases like you know some of the New Zealand first MPs who have come through the, over the years um they haven't been involved in any scandals or improprieties mm. So that whole it's idea so of boring, eh? insta- it's boring. <laughs> Come on, you guys. What happened to the social to contract? A, trying to hard do it hard doing a podcast every two weeks when no one's doing scandalous yeah, shit. Come time. on. Also, Nicole McKee, very funny speech in the coronation statement debate uh, the other day. Did you hear that? Very funny. Lots of interesting little facts about King Charles. The, the, Act have been very deliberate about developing their MPs over mm. the three years. So, uh, you know, I've heard the accusation that, you know, they're just told to sort of shut up and sit in the caucus room while David Seymour and to a lesser extent Brooke Van Velden uh, run everything. But it's not actually true. You see them taking, uh, you know, slots in the general debate, asking questions in the House. Uh, mo- a number of them, Mark Cameron, the ag guy, has like very um, a busy social media presence, gets sort of tens of thousands of viewers down on the farm with his gummies on. And what they've done is very deliberately kind of, you know, inducted them into public life and being MPs. They've done an extremely good job of it. And it it does make it harder for Labour to sort of go, you know, <laughs> you know, watch out for the, the pernicious influence of ACT because people sort of think, well, I haven't, I haven't seen anything really bad come from them. The, the other thing is in terms of policy, you know, ACT were pretty canny at the last election. I can't remember who it was. was it Thomas Coughlin did a speech. You know, they, they were sort of removing some of their less popular policies from the website. <laughs> and They were and, also quite canny, I think, when they released their first 100 days uh, thing, which was in uh, last year in July, mm. they did in the first hundred years of government, and not all, but most of them were reasonably in tune with nationals' positions. You know, they were very in tune. Yeah. Um, so they, they they hardly seemed like when they were going through their manifesto, they picked out. Although you know, it does say within first hundred days bring back charter schools. Uh, you know, there's a few things in there, but things like get rid of so called fair pay agreements. Well. That's on the National Party repeal list. Repeal three waters. Repeal the Māori Health Authority, you know. Yeah, and I, and I think that, you know, reinstituting charter schools, or at least getting the, the framework in place, that, that'll be pushing on an open door with National. So, you know, I, I think there will be less of a target in that sense. Um, that ACT will be campaigning on the same kinds of things as National, but in a much more sort of strident way. Mm. Um, and, of course, you know, their treaty policy is way off uh, to the right in terms of uh, rewriting the principles of the Treaty of Waitangi so that it is not a real thing. I'm Toby Manhire, and this is Juggernaut, the story of the fourth Labour government. 
a podcast in six parts. Doesn't give my opponents much time to run up to an election, does it? This nation is at risk. What do you think you're up to now, you perverted little liar? I can smell the uranium on it as you lean towards <laughs> the There's There's radical overhaul in the history of New Zealand's administration. Juggernaut, the story of the fourth Labour government. Made with the support of New Zealand On Air. Listen now on the spin-off or wherever you get your podcasts. Do you find it hard staying optimistic with all the financial news in the media? I'm Bernard Hickey, and on my podcast, When the Facts Change, I'm here to help you navigate the ever-changing landscape of economics in Aotearoa. So join the conversation every Friday on When the Facts Change, brought to you by the Spin-Off Podcast Network in partnership with KiwiBank. Mika Whaiteri, what else have we learned since we last gathered it's interesting, Annabelle, some of what I've heard her say and some of what I've heard uh, John Tumahiri say as well lends the some sort of greater suggestion to the idea that her whānau really were keen on it. Like the, sort of reading between the lines hasn't been said outright. It was like members of her whānau were more pissed off than she was <laughs> and said, I've had enough of this lot. Did you hear any of that? What else have you learnt about the rationale? Um, not a lot, to be honest. Yeah. And, I, and I think that's what her challenge is going to be like. Um, uh, I understand, you know, as the, you know, as whānau members of a politician, how mummy it can be to see your loved one go through what they go through. But, but ultimately, they're not. It's not enough people to get you elected, um, in, in the general election. And I, I, I just, I, I feel that there's a bit of a a, a shift in the mood coming because when it first happened, I think people were kind of waiting for the bombshell to drop about what it was that had tipped her over the edge. You know, was it to do with the um, to the um, cyclone recovery? Like, had she been advocating for communities where the where the support all the help wasn't hitting the ground or something like that because I think a lot of people would have totally understood and got on board with that. But so far it hasn't been any of that stuff. It's been very, very personal and I think... Very vibesy. It's very vibey. Decolonisation of the mind. Hey, look, everybody loves decolonisation. Everybody loves living your personal tenoranga tiratanga, but even that in itself hasn't been articulated. It's about homecoming and the feelings of her family, but still not a narrative, a compelling narrative around why things have been so bad that she could not at least see it out until the house rises. And I think it's starting to become problematic for her, you know, just from what I'm reading online and hearing on, you know, the kumara vine and that I think some Mm. people are uh, perhaps still puzzled about, you know, what's her reasons for leaving, the way she did, the way she did. I mean, now so far we've had the stand-up at the the announcement at the Marae last week. Yeah had a f- couple of little media interviews and stand-ups at Parliament and uh, the, the personal explanation in Parliament. And what we've got is, you know, this is a voyage of self-discovery. But this is um, which, you know, as we know from our friends and our families and our acquaintances, very, very interesting to the people involved and not very interesting to anyone outside them. Um, you know, at, at, at at first, I think everybody wanted to know more about uh, Mick Faitari's reasons for leaving Labour, and the more that it becomes the sort of self-indulgent thing, I think everyone's like, we would like to hear much less. <laughs> um, so I think it's a bit of a wash. I suspect John Tamahiri, maybe John Tamahiri and the Māori Party had something to do with the sort of overlay of this kind of emancipation narrative because JT has been sort of in the media a bit more talking about that and and sort of say, and, and the co-leaders have been talking about that and saying that's the story of this election, it's homecoming, it's, mm. you know, and, and what they want to do is promote this narrative that if you are Tuturu Māori, you're a member of the Māori Party. I mean, it, 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 it's best I can understand, and Tami Hira has said and that he he wasn't out there you know, actively courting her in any particular way, and that 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 that's interesting. But it seems as though basically the best I can understand is like I'm a bit sick of having to 
go through all these systems and processes and, you know, that's the nature of a bigger, bigger party, right? You know, there are, there's more people who say this is, I mean, that's, and she was saying, actually, I just want to be a bit freer. So forget, you know, whatever the shackling imagery you want to use. I want a bit freer, but freer just to say stuff that I want to say. I mean, that's, that's what it is. Well, sort of, ex- except that all she's said so far is that she wants to be free to say what she wants to say. It's almost comically yeah. sort of yeah. reminiscent of yeah. Alamein Kopu, who, when she left um, the alliance and defected to the nation <laughs> to support the National Party, said, "You know, I'm I'm just sick of Germanditon not listening to what I want the, to what I have to say." Mm. And one reporter, I think it might have even been Rob uh, Hosking, RIP, said, "Well, look, he's listening now. What do you want?" To say to Jim Anderton, and she said, just that he should listen to me. Sounds like the type of things I say when I have arguments with people. <laughs> Very relatable for me. Hey, Annabelle. <laughs> just listen to me. What? <laughs> I don't know why. Just, just, just because. Just okay? Mm. <laughs> um, <laughs> just because. That's the. Uh, the we I, th- talked- I thought Willie, Willie Jackson, yeah. I thought, was really good over the weekend. Um, I thought that Labour did really well at not rising to the sort of right. bait that yeah. I think that was offered by yeah. Tamahiri. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, I thought Jackson actually acquitted himself extremely well over those weekend shows, mm. sort of uh, explaining it. Yeah, they looked they, they looked sort of affronted but not mad, you know? They, yeah, they, sort they, of concern, was, sort of like, yeah. well, look, if there, is something gonna, that's, yeah. if there is something that's been eating her, we're really sorry and... We'd like to talk about it, but we're pretty confident. Hey, Annabelle, we talked. We talked at the end of the last before, after we finished the last, last podcast a bit about um, Heather Teo Skipworth, who mm. made way mm. uh, for Mikafaitari. How has that gone down? Do you think? I mean, it was she was she was quite powerful, and you know, she was very honest, and she said, "Look, to be honest, I didn't." I didn't didn't love the idea when it was put to me. <laughs> She'd been announced as the as the the candidate. She was obviously you know working her way up towards it, and now she's sort of been you know told to move to one side and appear at the announcement and put her arms. You know, ha, ha, is, I guess what I'm saying is: is there any risk that within Te Party Māori there is a sense of actually sort of shipping in new people from mm. outside is not is not the co-papa. Well, you kind of have to wonder about the messaging of it, eh? It's like here's someone who's put in the hard yards for them and then gets shifted for a for a Labour minister who's had 10 years already in, in Parliament. Um, I heard through the Kumara Vine, and I don't know how true it is, that, um, that she gave the Māori Party leadership a good dressing down over it. Yep. And I think, you know, there's a lot of people who feel a lot of aroha for Heather. I certainly do. She she came on um, the hui during our election coverage last year and, you know, she's a she's an inspiring wahine, like the mahi that they do with um, Iron Māori, which is one of the most hugest kaupapa in Te Ao Māori and has done so much in terms of health and fitness for ordinary whānau. And I think there'll be people that are feeling like, you know, in terms of natural justice, she's been a bit hard done by. And I think the other thing that may not be sitting well with people is, you know, we talk a lot in Te Ao Māori about kanohi ki te kanohi and rangatira ki te rangatira. I think I mentioned that last week. And the fact that um, Mecca still hasn't spoken to her, to the Māori caucus in Labour or had a conversation with um, with Chris Hipkins as, as the leader of Labour, I think for some people, you know, raises questions about how this has played out. Mm. Uh, Elizabeth Kerekere is now an independent MP. She on Friday night, last Friday night at 8pm, addressed a Zoom call of Green members and that had been arranged because she wanted to be able to address and many of the members wanted to hear from her too as they go through the last days now of their voting on the list ranking. She was originally ranked fourth once the sort of draft list was put out by delegates and then there was that very uh, strange video and revelations that she had sent to the wrong group chat, the wrong signal group messages, which some interpreted to be uh, belittling Chloe Swarbrick, another Green MP, as a quote-unquote crybaby. Then 
the the green leadership they clarified uh, in recent days they launched an inquiry before it got into the media which is interesting uh, but then that inquiry has been ongoing into her relationship with staff members and MPs that was ongoing she spoke at that zoom that I mentioned questioning the decision making of James Shaw and Madame Davidson questioning the allegations and immediately afterwards presumably following a conversation with Shaw and Davidson who disputed many of those characterizations she resigned as both an MP and a member of the Green Party have I missed anything out in that synopsis Ben and how damaging is it for the Green Party it's part of the coalition of chaos narrative for sure does this risk I don't know <laughs> how deep your how deep your network runs within the many different um, parts of the Green Party, but I guess the biggest risk is that it creates a kind of situation similar to the one where James Shaw's leadership came was challenged. He got it back pretty straightforwardly. That it's sort of a as much an internal Green issue as it is how Green plays with the electorate. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, look, first of all, chalk one up for the leadership. Uh, they successfully white-handed her out of her job, uh, which I think was the goal, and, you know, kudos. That's, there's, there's, there's not a lot of times where you see sort of um, ruthless political action effectively executed by the Greens, so I think we should give them a moment. They this. would, they would. it goes without saying, <laughs> they, would, they would strongly dispute that characterisation, but sure. Uh, well, no, I mean, I think, you know, there's, I, I don't think there's any argument that they weren't trying to sort of force her out, the, you know, mm -hmm. that's plausible. Um, and there may have been good reasons, depending on the facts that were disclosed to them during the investigation. Um, but in terms of will it be a problem with the wider electorate, it does. It, it, it chimes in with this sort of theme of instability, of, of chaos, on the other hand, the allegations that sort of started surfacing, you know, the acting like a mean girl and bullying staff, unsubstantiated, but floated on things like RNZ, which are media that the, let's remember, older, whiter, more middle class people who actually make up the bulk of the, the sort of green voters. Yep. Um, just just, just in passing, unsubstantiated and rejected by Kenny And King. rejected by Kenny Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that may have coloured their opinions sufficiently that they sort of think, well, not actually that much of a loss. Um, the left greens will certainly be upset about it and angry. Uh, they are usually upset and angry uh, that James Shaw is still alive or that... <laughs> <laughs> that Chloe Swarbrick is once again in the, the top 15 candidates. Um, it, look, I, I think that it's sufficiently far out from the election that if we don't hear too much more from Kitty Kitty and she seems to just sort of be stepping back, uh, that it won't have too much of an impact on them. Annabelle Lee Mather. Um, well, there's a, there's still a little while until the election. I think this, I suspect this will probably be water under the bridge by then. Um, depending on how she conducts herself over the next few months, like Ben said, I think a lot of people will think that it's a good thing that she's gone. I think what's unfortunate is, from what I've read, the next person on the list is a wahine called Huhana Linden um, from up north, comes from a family of massive overachievers, like really incredible, wahine, incredible no, And I think um, there's a few people who are quite disappointed that she's not going to get the opportunity to right. come in on the list and get, you know, four or five months experience under her belt before the election. So mm. th there's a bit of um, resentment towards over that. Um, I, I think also in terms of a fessel, does it bump a fessel up a little bit closer? The guy that could have been yeah, down there up, but didn't get to be because of Ben and the, all of all of the members, are, all of the oh yeah, hmm. yeah Ben that guy Ben that guy don't worry he uh, might then, get to be in Parliament. Then, my, no. my, my job wasn't getting a getting a fissile elected. That was we someone know. else's job. Well, we know. <laughs> all right, okay, all right, come on, uh, focus. The 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 Greens 
are on 7% in that poll that we were talking about, which is actually an increase. They went up by a smidge from 6.7, so it's non-significant. But, but it is, you know, the whole Metedia two-day episode is a little kind of, uh, you know, you know a, a useful reminder that things can turn quite quickly, you know. And so, I, I mean, maybe that, maybe that informs the leadership stance on this matter. I don't know. But it's like, you know, nothing is locked in, right, <laughs> you know, in the next five months. If having having had the, the James Shaw business, you know, the Elizabeth Kerekere situation, whereas ACT continue to apparently inviolably sail with their discipline and whatever, you know, it's not, it's not locked in is what I'm saying. No, of course not. I mean, on the other hand, uh, there was that real show of sort of togetherness um, by Shaw and Marama over uh, Shaw, Shaw, James Shaw and uh, Marama Davidson over mm. this issue uh, mm. since the beginning. Um, and I think that that is actually quite powerful imagery for the yeah. Greens. I think, you know, people like Bryce Edwards write a lot of these sort of boilerplate kind of columns about, oh, the Greens, social justice versus environmentalism, they're tearing apart at the seams. Everybody knows that the Greens are a far left party, but they're also an environmentalist party. And seeing those two, you know, the the co-leaders drawn from each of those traditions together, I think is a very good image. There has been a sort of suggestion for, for much of their co-leadership that, you know, Martimer and James are basically sort of we're kind of leading parallel lives. Um, and I actually think this, the show of unity is probably a, a net plus for them. Well, it's interesting that I like the whole, are they a social justice party or are they an environmental party? Because like in Te Ao Māori, the two go hand in hand, like oranga tangata, oranga taiao. It seems like it's only mainstream media and voters that struggle to get their head around that. Well, it's I mean, hard to imagine one are, without the other. There are examples around setting. the world that suggest that you can have the the the, the what was it? You know, yeah. the teal independent tendency, and there are there is there are some parts of Europe where the green parties are less interested in uh, pushing social yeah, but justice in New agendas. Zealand, they've always been what they are. In it, New Zealand, they came from the values party, it, right? They're from hippies, exactly. So, and there is the the idea that they are going to suddenly um, change a stripe, burn a ticky, and. Uh, uh, start uh, talking about doing coalition deal with the national isn't going to happen. So let's not spend any more time on that. Let's instead get to what really matters. Annabel, did you watch on Saturday night the coronation? I didn't. What? But, but not but any of it. None of it. I've just seen little bits on like Twitter and stuff, like Katy Perry looking for her seat, and yeah. is it Princess Anne's feather in front of Harry's face? <laughs> but this is can really I dis- say? Dis- 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 disappointing. Kate's cape. Oh, oh my god! So good. Her so look, her whole look was good. fantastic. I really want one of those, but I'll chuck some <laughs> tanny core around the border or something. What a vibe! The um the other the other look was what's the dude's name who uh, was the who's a Welsh composer? Oh, Carl Jenkins. Carl Sir Carl Jenkins. Yeah, that is it. His handlebar moustache, side ease, aviators. shades, aviator shades. Sat next to um, Andrew Lloyd Webber. Yeah, some people thought that it was Meghan Markle in disguise that was sneaking a, into. That was the, nice. That was the, the joke. That was, did you did you watch it on on Saturday, Ben? Yeah, of course. Yeah, good. Uh, I I am I embrace tradition. Did, um, have you sworn allegiance to the king? I, I did. I mouth, I did it like the you national anthem. It. I sort of mouthed along oh, yeah. the words okay. that I sort of remembered, and no, I kind no, of no, tried no. to anticipate yeah. what they right. might say. Yes. And Beautiful. I was, um, but you felt it in your heart. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. But I, I, it's it's times like these that as a much like much like the nation of Great Britain itself. Um, you know, I'm an embodiment of you know an, an almost mongrel sort of combination mm. of, of 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 different kind of strands you and are. lineages, yeah. and um, so when when Charles put on the big floppy oversized glove, fondled the orb, and had a few whacks in the air with the sword of justice, got sort of, anoint, sort of got anointed with oils behind the. Behind so what was the deal? So was he naked when like they were doing? I don't think he was session. full Starker naked. Because he went he, behind the screens. He went behind the screens, 
And I think he whipped off his shirt. Yeah. And they sort of anointed him on his chest and that sort of carry on. That's they right. And then they said, and then they put on this nipple massage. Then they put on a <laughs> sleeveless vest of linen to mm. symbolize simplicity. Mm. And then over that, the golden <laughs> macrame. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> is, there, is there anything <laughs> to, 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 to symbolise that more the, relatable it's all about than that? <laughs> <laughs> it's not. It's not that we, we don't want to dwell on the simplicity. Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, it's a part of it, but it's not all of it. Sam, you would have watched it. Sam, you watched it, didn't you? I know no, you I actually you didn't. didn't. I was I was out at, at a bar okay, with... Okay, I don't care where you were. He's, he's a Diana oh God, loyalist. So like, well, he's so Again, so another... Mean, another the, I mean, apart from Ben, you have both sort of failed in your duty of subservience Listen, to... Listen, it was very hard to stay awake after that. I wasn't being snobby. I just, like, I was over full. How about we all declare our... Uh, our sovereignty to our the king. Allegiance right now. to our allegiance, allegiance, to the king. allegiance. Let's quit, let's, let's um that. yeah. Uh, let's let's talk about republicanism. Since oh, Annabelle's doing melting face emoji again onto the table. Her face is literally melting. Like the anointed nipples of Prince Charles, King Charles, <laughs> into the table. Uh I, is I it, think I'd rather look like his nipples than like his fingers. His fingers are terrifying. Well, see, the interesting thing is when he was there was when he was touching the Bible just before he kissed it, he his fingers looked really good. And I actually I even tweeted about it. I was like, he must have been working out, doing some <laughs> like <laughs> sort of joint exercise and stuff. But then we saw them from an alternate angle when there was you know the um, yeah the, the ring, spoon the, dick the ring orb. like the ring on the thing. <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah, and and then they didn't look so good, and I was like, maybe it's just the lighting, maybe mm. there was like some filtering going on. Was AI involved in the BBC feed? Yeah. Um. Anyway, yeah, republicanism. Just quickly, you know, uh, weren't we meant to go through the respectfully the mourning period after Queen Elizabeth? The second ruled for however many centuries. Uh, she did well. She was good. She stayed there. She did the Christmas messages. And then after that, when the new guy came in, we'd have the conversation about mm. whether or not maybe it's a bit weird to be ruled by a random person in a random family from the other side of the world. Mm. But it hasn't happened really, has it? There hasn't been much of that. We've been busy though. We, didn't, we had a lot on. Yeah. We've had a bit on, We've like, a on. you know. Like, li literally no one cares. It's. Every functional part of being a republic we already have. The only difference is that there's this residual power in this, you know, <clears throat> this this powerful fingered man in a far off land. <laughs> <laughs> the, do you reckon they'd have the glove taken out before we put it on? <laughs> like, <laughs> anyway, sorry, anyway, anyway. <laughs> Less contemplating the glories oh, of our monarch. But people like, can't keep up with this constitutional <laughs> analysis. <laughs> it's too much. But, but the thing is... What about him talking shit about William and the carriage? I saw that Wait, on what? The, the lip reading. The lip reading. The lip reading. What did he say? Yeah. Uh, he was like, William arrived late. He was supposed to get there before his dad. And, he, and Charles was is in the late? carriage. Yeah, they were late. In the carriage, not in the garage. He yeah, wasn't in the kids, garage. Three kids. It's hard. Three it's hard. kids. You know, that's and one of, is that kid Lewis. He looks like a little shit. Yeah. Like, three he's kids. How many fucking servants? Like a hundred? This is true. But they're not allowed these days to, you know, just sort of bind them up in straight jackets and deliver them in, you know. Or better yet, have them raised in a different court like they did back in oh, the yeah. old days, which I'm a big you fan of. Like and then it, you yeah. meet can, them when can, they're teenagers yeah, and then you the send equivalent. them to live in France. Um, okay, <laughs> right, okay, okay. Um, take us out, Annabelle, on your thoughts on New Zealand's path towards the Republic. Um, well, not to be mean about Queen Elizabeth, but it would have been no disrespect, but helpful if she had died before Moana Jackson did so that Moana Jackson could be here to lead this discussion for mm -hmm. us because mm -hmm. he's the man that's done the most thinking and the most research and had the most conversations about this stuff. Well, I guess now it can never happen then, sad. Okay, look, thanks very much. Sam's got the screens out and the oils and um, we're just going to 
we're just going to go in there and, and swear allegiance as required. Uh, we'll be back very soon. Might even do a little budget special with Bernard Hickey next week. You may not ask, not but yet. with Bernard. Oh, yeah. my God, thank God. Well, oh, I'm sorry to yes, deny no, the opportunity do it with to Bernard, no. Do you want to do an immediate response about the budget? Is that what um, you're saying? Okay. No, thank you. Come in. Let's do it. No. Kia ora. Kia ora, I'm Duncan Grieve, founder of The Spin-Off. You can help us keep all of The Spin-Off's award-winning journalism free for everybody by becoming a member today at thespinoff.co.nz slash donate. Are you curious about how business can be better? I'm Simon Pound and I host Business is Boring, a podcast where I caught it all with some of the most interesting people in entrepreneurship, commerce and making things happen. Tune in to Business is Boring every Tuesday, brought to you by the Spinoff Podcast Network in partnership with Smart Business Lab. The Spinoff Podcast Network.